Hello, hello. This time we're going to do something quite fast and quite simple. I'm just going to show you a part of my working progress uh, process when I'm uh, creating floor slabs for some conceptual curvilinear shapes or, or more organic forms. When I'm just trying out different forms for different competitions, architectural competitions, I really need to quickly be able to generate floor slabs and just see how the horizontality of these floor slabs or floor plates uh, influences my geometry and I really don't want to kind of spend a lot of time working on it in Rhino so instead I use Grasshopper for that so hopefully some of you will find it quite um, useful. Um, these three forms that I have prepared here well as you can see these two are kind of uh, kind of similar to one another and this one is a little bit different but um, let me jump to something more nice um, a nicer preview these three forms were created from um, uh, with cocoon uh, plugin you can use either cocoon or dendro doesn't matter i do have tutorials for on how to create these forms oh actually um do i have this yeah i have my uh YouTube channel open. So if, if you want to create the first, where are we? If you want to create something like this and, and work with geometry such as this, um, you can just uh, kind of take a look at the webinars, the, um, the, the, the grasshopper webinars that I've made, uh, starting with webinar one right here and just going through them. There are six of them. So just going through them um, and just um, some parts of them will contain tutorials on how to work with curves and thus create these kind of uh, mesh forms. I believe this form is, if I type in what, is still a, yeah, it's a closed polygon mesh, meaning it's 3D printable and can be, you know, easily produced. It's very high density and the reason why I've done it this way is so that I have a lot of really stupid um, stupid thin edges here uh, or, or geometries here which will probably mess up my definition that I'll be sh showing to you but you know I kind of want to first show you how it works and then show you where it breaks so we have this form here um, and then we have these two forms which are my cellular automata uh, forms and I do have tutorials for these two as well um, and those are 4.2 or 2019-2 Grasshopper 2D Game of Life and uh, 4.3 um, Grasshopper 3D Game of Life Cellular Automata tutorials. So if you follow these two tutorials, you'll be able to create these forms as well or generate these forms as well. Let me, while I'm still talking, let me load up Rhino and just start kind of showing you how I'm going to uh, be creating these uh, floor plates for, for these forms. I'll start off with the right hand side one, so I'll just isolate it. And this approach works for everything, like it works for, for uh, either NURPS poly surfaces or NURP surfaces, either open or closed, doesn't matter, or it works for meshes also, either open or closed, doesn't really matter. So you can use um, wh whichever form you have. Um, and the way you reference in a form without pre-assigning it being either a NURBS polysurface or a mesh is you just create an empty component called geometry. So geometry node, right click on it, set one geometry, uh, click on the geometry in the, in the, or in this case the mesh and in your Rhino hide it and there you, you go, you have it in, um, in Grasshopper. So floor plates, right? Um, the tool that I'm going to be using for generating floor plates is called ISOVIST. Oops, not, that's not how you write it, ISOVIST. Compute an ISOVIST sampling at a location. Uh, you can already kind of see what's happening with the, uh, with the icon, but I will kind of go through the inputs and explain what they do. So the first one is plane, sampling plane and origin. I will, uh, in this case, I will just create, um, for now, just a point. 
or rather uh, no let's create a line I will create uh, a line let's say from zero and just upwards doesn't matter vertical line let me jump back to perspective and I will reference it in as a curve set one curve like that and I will create um, create a point or rather evaluate this line at a specific length to be able to create uh, a point on it right so I will say evaluate length evaluate length and I'll connect my curve to my curve input uh, for the length oh yeah and this is a very interesting one um, by default the length number is basically um, in in this case in millimeters right so how far do we go from the starting point in millimeters towards the ending point right but but if I right click on this input see input here and I choose to reparameterize the curve now all of my lengths are going to be in between 0 and 1 so it's all going to be a proportion rather than the actual number so I can just create a slider saying 0 0.5 0, 0, 0, whatever high really high resolution slider connected to the length and you can see it's right in the middle and I can go from 0 until 1 with this slider super so back here uh, let me just move the geometry down here isovist goes here uh, back here first input sampling plane so this is a point and it asks me for a plane and I want it to be horizontal of course because it's going to be a floor slab right so I'll just create a xy plane on my point by just typing in you know xy I can get that xy plane here so I just connect it to my point and you can see here now every time when I move my slider uh, this XY plane moves which means I can just straight up connect it to isovist plane input next up we have sample count which is 10 and for now I will just create this or, or let's keep it as it is right sample count 10 we will change that for sure later but for now let's just have it um, and uh, third one is the radius sample radius which is set to be 100 by default we will be changing that as well of course and last one is obstacles right so it's it's obstacles uh, think of it this way this plane and this point the center point in this plane will create these kind of rays uh, 10 10 rays that will go um in 360 degrees right so straight lines and it, they, they will extend for a hundred units so it's basically going to be a circle right around uh they are going to extend for a hundred units as long as they don't hit anything so in this case thing that they can uh, that they might hit i think that they might hit is this geometry right here right this one so i consider this geometry to be a, a, an obstacle for my isovist and i'll connect it like so as i have all of the kind of these two are default but other two inputs uh, set up you can see 10 points were created and it's actually not hitting anything i think Oh, right it's it's hitting that one extending towards that one but is that a bug i wonder if that's a bug doesn't matter um i will just show you how i kind of will will create a surface from this array of points that i've uh, generated with isovist right so we have intersection points right here and if i type in polyline uh oh, sorry or do I type in polyline? Yeah, I type in polyline. If I just create a polyline through these intersection points, I get my, you know, my, my polyline. It's not closed though, so I need to um, choose, uh, for, for the second input of the polyline, I need to toggle it. Uh, toggle. That's not how you write toggle. That's with a double G. Boolean toggle. I turn it on and I connect it here and now closed is set to be true so it's going to close it 
uh, close off the polyline. And then all I need to do is just boundary surface. Create a boundary surface around the polyline. Easy. Okay, um, so that's that's that. Let me hide a few things here. Uh, I'll hide that. But now how does it work, right? If I were to move this line closer to my form, you can see that as um, the isovist hits the form, the points will stop, right? But I don't have a lot of resolution. I only have 10 points, so it's it's being weird. So here, where it says uh, sample count, it's set to 10. I will increase it to, let's say, 200. I'll connect it here. Much more points, right? And thus, much better reaction of the floor plate. Okay, so we have that going. Uh, which means that now I can move this plate here and it's going to kind of cut itself uh, away depending on what, what kind of geometry it hits, right? But it's being very big, right? So I want to be able to control how, how, how big this circle is and that's the radius. So sample radius is said to be 100. I will say that the sample radius should be somewhere between 1 and, um, I don't know, uh, 30? Some, somewhere between 1 and 30. And now as we're playing playing with it, you can see that, oh, by the way, it's, it's going to mess up, or rather it's not messing up, but this is what happens when you don't have enough resolution but as we're increasing resolution it's going to become better and better here it's going to get more and more points here so it does um, extend towards areas where the rays would hit but that's i think a very 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 nice thing about it okay so we have we have this setup right now oh whoops shouldn't hide the geometry. Now I actually want to move this curve inside of, of my form, right? And it's not just that, but actually I want to, uh, to divide up this line into parts, right? So to do that, um, I could just say, you know, uh, that this curve, I, I just divide, divide the curve by 10 points and I kind of connect it like so and just call it a day, right? We have 10 floor plates and uh, we call it a success. I just increase the radius even more. So it's all, it's, all, it's all cool. You know, we have our floor plates, but it's not really accurate because I, I have no control over the gap between these uh, floor plates. So instead of using divide here or instead of using evaluate curve here, Sorry, I will be contouring this curve and thus generating points through it. So I'll be cutting this curve at a specific increment. So I'll use contour, um, create a set of curve contours. Perfect. Contour X. Or do we have? What's X? I don't know what X means. Now let's try contour X. So the first input is a curve, of course. The second one is base plane for contour starts from 0, 0, 0. That's perfect. Uh, third input is offsets. Contour offsets from base plane. All right, so this is what, uh, how high each floor is. And let's try doing like 10. Huh. Not sure if it works. Let's, let's try. What does it give us? Just a single point, huh? I guess that's what X means. Um, that we need to spe specify... Yeah, uh, we need to specify every offset. So let's, let's try uh, another 
just contour, not without, uh, without the accent brackets, just a simple contour for the curve, like that. I keep forgetting this, sorry. Um, I'll delete that. So just a simple contour this time for the curve. Uh, contour start point zero 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 perfect. Uh, contour normal normal direction upwards perfect. Distance between contours ten. There we go. So now it's it's contouring it by ten. And I will just connect my uh, contours, or rather, I will flatten out this data tree that I got. I'll flatten it out, connect it to my planes, and I have my floor plates here. Every 10 units. In this case, as you can see, I'm not working the correct scale, but of course, if you were working correct scale, this would be like 4 meters or, or 3.5 meters, depending on what kind of building you do. You're doing. The reason why I'm doing this, um, instead of just dividing up the, the, the curve according to some sort of a length, is because now I have full control over where I'm going to place these floor plates. So I can do what I can do is I can um, rebuild this curve in uh, Rhino, and I can say, give me like six points. Uh huh. Degree. I will say the degree should be. I'll keep it as a polyline. So degree should be one. Six points. Degree one. Delete it. Put yes. Hit OK. And now, as I as I have this curve selected, and actually let me hide the boundaries for now because they're getting in the way, and hide the contours for now. As I have my line selected, I can control. These, I can move these control points around and specify where the, 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 the floor plates should start. You know, let's say all of this is still good and they should start from here and then kind of extend towards here and then go through. Yeah, they're going through that hole there. That's good. And perhaps this point is moving in here a little bit down then going through this hole going up 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 maybe like that and then reaching the top here which actually doesn't need to do so i'll just stop it somewhere here or even maybe i don't need that point i'll d delete that point right so i have my my curve now, if I look at how the contours are looking for that curve, right? It's cutting co contours every, um, hmm. Oh yeah, we need to fix that. So where we said we have the starting point, right? Instead of um, choosing 0, 0, 0, which is this point right here, I'll be choosing a starting point of this curve, right? So I'll uh, choose curve endpoints and points that and i believe it's going to be curve start point here yeah perfect so now it's going to go along uh, you know it's going to start from from here and kind of do a cut through this curve which creates a point uh, every 10 units let's see how the boundary looks like now hide the geometry those are my, my floor plates. So now the cool thing. Um, let me make all of this nicer. Uh, I will just create a custom custom preview for my geometry. Sure, pink is fine for, for here. And uh, custom preview for my boundary, which is going to be white. Or mm, let me do something like this. Uh, that's a very ugly one. <laughs> Wait, now I'm going to mess around with this for, for, for a while. Yeah, there we go. That's good enough. <clears throat> right, so now what I can control... Uh, maybe this... Yeah, this is better. What I can control is the resolution. So I can do less... Or I can do a very low resolution. Uh, floor plates or very high resolution floor plates it's up to you or and I can control the radius right 
So I can just specify that, you know, all of my floor plates uh, are, are just circular floor plates of radius 13. And then they, uh, they are anchoring themselves to the structure, um, you know, wherever the center point hits it, uh, which means that the structural, um, like creating a structure is going to be extremely simple and extremely easy to do. All I need to do is just say, well, we have these center points here, right? So I can just graph them into graph three. I will graph them into separate branches because here I can see that these are also grafted into separate branches, the isovist points, these guys. And I can, for instance, say that for isovist points, um, just give me those uh, those points that are kind of uh, hitting something, right? So the way I, I determine which points are just making a circle and not hitting anything and which points are hitting the mesh is by this output here, index as list. List of obstacle indices for each hit. Or, that's the important one, or minus one if no obstacle was hit. So if I ask, if I ask is it equal, is this index equal to minus one? It's the same thing as me asking, um, is this point hitting a mesh or is this point hitting a mesh? And it answers yes or no, right? So with this, let me just move it up. It's going to be a little bit tangled, but what can you do? With this, these answers, which are, uh, it's hitting, 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 uh, and uh, so on, uh, or rather, no, it should be like this. It, it, it's not hitting, right? Um, with these answers, I can remove the points, these points, that are not hitting a mesh. So I'll do cull pattern. Cull pattern for these points, so that's the list that I call with uh, inequal inequality statement of this uh, node like that. So you can see here, now I'm only left with the points that are actually hitting the mesh and I have the center point, which means I can easily just draw a line between the center point and the points that each, each mesh hits like that. And that's way too many, right? So uh, what I will do is I will just say, okay, call, um, call pattern, and I will just specify um, true. So remove true, false. So remove two, leave one, then remove two, leave one. I also right click on this panel and click on multiline data like that. So if I hide all of this, you can see that only, only uh, like m much less uh, of, of the lines are left. I can remove even, even more. True, true. So remove four, leave one. Wait. Oh crap, it needs to be the other way around. I'm sorry. Um, so false, 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 true. There we go. Yeah, that, that was my bad, sorry. Um, so we have these, these guys going on and then I can just take these lines and kind of, for instance, just quickly extrude them, Z, extrude them down, uh, or, or in this case up, by if I, but if I give it negative, uh, that will go down by, I don't know, 0 0.2 millimeters or units. So I have, uh, I have these extrusions here that I can also connect to the custom preview right here and kind of, you know, just have a very quick way on, on how to, how to check what, what, what kind of structures am I getting, right? And let me hide everything else, right? And go to maybe Arctic view will be, oh yeah, and I need to right click, 
disable rendering and I can I can see what kind of structure am I getting from this. Um, a few more things that, that I want to show and then we will jump to a bonus, I guess a bonus video uh, here where I'm going to show you how to do a 360 degree uh, video is uh, if I show this guy and also kind of use it as an obstacle geometry right click set one geometry so I have now these two guys and I can use both of them as obstacles this will extend towards this this structure as well so these ribs will extend until they actually hit something right if they would hit something they they, they will extend to it which is uh, both good and bad um, but to, to to control it better what we can do is let's say we have two curves um, should i create another one yeah let's create another one or actually how do i show this so i i showed you an example with two surfaces that's that's about it you know n n nothing special about it so i'll just clear values and just oops that was the wrong one to delete doesn't matter we'll we'll now work with the with this one then that's fine let me just move my my form here my my curve here and kind of repurpose it for for this structure right so i will just grab its control points one by one and uh, kind of figure out where do i want to where the hell do i want to put them perhaps this one can be perfect it can sit here and then <clears throat> this one goes right to the middle somewhere here perfect and then this one i i don't want this one to kind of intersect too much so it can go here like that that's good so now you can see here <coughs> sorry uh, you can see here the a floor plate is stuck inside of of a mesh so i'll be fixing that by just moving this point all the way here no that wasn't enough and now it's a little bit crashy uh, but that's fine so this one also needs to move to the side the more you work with this the better you're going to get at it but basically we have that and actually i kind of like this <laughs> these weird things i just want to increase the radius a little bit like that and maybe this one is a bit too out there too much out there so i'll just move it back like this super so we have our you know quick quick and dirty floor plates uh, for for this structure as well yeah and so that's how it looks like uh, pretty easy pretty pretty quick and uh, probably helpful for some um, the, the the one more thing before we do the 360 degree animation is one more thing that i want to show you is um, how it kind of messes up not necessarily messes up but how it can be a little bit funky and it's probably going to be with this geometry i will be surprised if it's you know if it works uh, let me just move it in there and I check it out um, let me hide the geometry preview hide this one just uh, I just want to look at the floor plates yeah you can see here that when you have a, a very very like a how, how porous I guess uh, extremely porous structure first of all it will probably miss uh, some edges so it will um, ignore uh, very 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 thin ones unless you haven't seen resolution um, second of all it's going to be you know this kind of a very spiky boy so we don't really 
um, I don't suggest using this approach on an extremely porous structure, but it does work with uh, stuff like this, as, as you probably see, uh, have seen. So I'll stick to uh, I'll stick to this guy. Actually, let me bake this out. Bake default uh, group. Yes, please. Okay. Make default, yes please, okay. And now I will, where is my curve? I'll take that curve and I'll move it back. Don't remember where it was, but uh, who cares? This is a fast one, set one geometry. And I don't really need this one, so I'll just delete it. Um, this one seems good, 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 good. That's a little bit an, uh, of an awkward one, so I will just move this curve slightly there. So now it's fixed. Uh, so it's like that, that's good. That's good, good, good. What about the base? Ah, the base is bad. Um, I will just, ah, where's the curve? Come on. Give me the curve. Just give me. Where's the curve? There we go. I'll just uh, take the control point of the curve, which is right here. Just move it into this hole. There we go. And by the way, if I move it down, you can see the floor plate also moves down. That's a very, uh, at least for me, it's a very convenient thing to, to have. Oh, the spiky boy. Um, if that spiky boy happens, then what we need to do is just move that control point. Uh, where is it? That control point slightly back, and now it's gone. So I'm just double checking if I don't have any spiky boys. There is one more. I'll just move it here. So now it's uh, it's fixed. No more spiky boys. Everything is fine, uh, so I'll be baking out these things. Um, oops, forgot to group. Uh, bake default group. And as you can see, I've, I'm not doing any. Oh, that's the wrong group. Um, I'm not um, doing any uh, thickening here because it's all. Um, very, like not experimental, but just me ch checking, you know, um, how it's going to look like. Uh, I don't care about the thickness of things. Let me um, disable the render here and disable the render here. Just see, uh, look at these. Seems to be good. So we have some sort of a you know, very rudimentary framework, which, by the way, I, I could grab the the polyline here. And where is it? Where is the polyline? Contour, isovist equals polyline. There we go. I can grab that polyline um, and extrude it real quick. That was a very stupid thing to do uh, because it's uh, that polyline has uh, so many points. But I'll, I did it either way, bake it. So now we get the frame for, for, for this. Um, quite, quite simple and, and easy to do. So we have all of the information here that's necessary. I will, and it's a small one, so uh, a small definition. So I'll just kind of <clears throat> group it and call it a day. Okay, so that's how it looks like, right? Uh, we have floor plates here. And now for a 300, uh, promised 360 degree view, I will do it on maybe this one. Eh, this one is kind of boring. Yeah, I'll hide this one. Uh, hide. I'll hide this one and I'll do it on this one. So um, to do a 360 degree uh, video or recording of, of, of your form, all you need to do is type in geometry. Uh, create a geometry node, so select multiple geometries, so you just select everything that you want to reference in, it gets referenced in, you create a bounding box around it, um, 
right now you can see it's set to be per object so it creates a bunch of bounding boxes if you right click and choose uh, right click on the b box um, name and you choose union box it's going to create a one big box here and if i measure if we measure the volume of this bounding box like so it will give us a volumetric centroid so that's going to be the point around which we rotate the geometry right so i'm going to rotate uh, rotate 3d i'm going to rotate all of my geometry around this uh, volume centroid volumetric centroid right and the axis, or sorry, the, the, the axis here is going to be Z, it's going to be upwards, that's perfect. Let me hide everything here, hide the geometry here. So we're just rotating it. And notice how angles are always in radians, I hate that. Uh, so I'll just change it to degrees. <clears throat> and I'll just create a slider 0, dot, dot, 360, uh, dot, 0, 0. Uh, that last dot zero zero just gives me more resolution, right? <clears throat> As I connect it to my angle input, now I can rotate my, you know, my form 360 degrees. Super. Okay, now to color it, um, I can kind of um, say, let's say, give me a mesh, or hmm, how do we set? Yeah, and so that's how it looks like. Uh, pretty easy, pretty pretty quick, and uh, pr probably helpful for some. Um, the, the, the one more thing before we do the 360 degree animation is one more thing that I want to show you is um, how it kind of go back, hide. Um, instead of referencing everything at once, I will clear values and I will create a mesh container, a brep, brep container, and another one. No, uh, just mesh and brep. I'll just kind of differentiate between these two. Uh, so my facade is a mesh. I just set multiple meshes or set one mesh. Uh, doesn't matter. I'll hide it. And my brep is all of these floor plans, uh, floor plates, breps, right? So for, for this to work, I will use, how do we do that? Um, I know, I will use Antwine, Antwine. Just, the, if you zoom in, you can add or delete the inputs for the Antwine. And the first branch is going to be the mesh, and the second branch is going to, do, to be a brep. So I've just created the data tree. And uh, let me hide these guys. I don't want to see them. So I have a data tree with two branches. In one branch, I have a mesh, and the other one, I have the floor plates. Right? If I were to connect it like so right now, it would crash because it would create 900 bounding boxes, uh, thus 900 volumetric centroids, and thus it would rotate the whole form 900 times. So instead of doing that, I will be. Um, da -da -da, I will disconnect the geometry uh, from the bounding box, and I will connect it like so. Right? And I'll make sure that um, my, my, my geometry here is, it needs to come in as a data tree here, but it needs to generate a single curve. So, oh, so all I need to do is just flatten out the input geometry to contain. If I flatten this input, it means it's going to ignore the data structure and is going to give me one centroid. So we're back to where we started, right? Except now the output is in two separate um, data um, branches. I can show you like this. Um, how is that called? Param viewer. I can show it like so. Two branches, one contains the mesh, other contains all the floor slabs, and I can uh, separate them now by using bang, explode, nope, that's not bang, bang, explode tree, um, and I can say that the first one should be previewed, custom preview, should be previewed, 
uh, with the color light gray and the second one swatch uh, should be previewed with the color oh I don't need to copy the swatch uh, with the color dark gray uh, something like that maybe we'll see and then I change this to arctic view just to see how it looks like that's not bad Maybe the color here can be a bit brighter. Or actually, this is a floor plate tutorial. We should make it. Mm, red is a bit boring. What if we do blue? Yeah, let's go for blue. Okay, um, now I will just. I, I really like um, AXO, uh, no, isometric views. Definitely not that view. <laughs> Something like this. That's perfect. And now let's see how it rotates. Nice. That looks good. Okay. Um, so I have that going on. And actually I don't see the freaking... Um, you know, I've spent so, so much time doing these, these beams and I don't see them. Which I don't like. So I will change the swatch. Uh, if I right click on, this, on the blue swatch, I will change this to be transparent and hope that... Ah, oh, crap, that the transparency doesn't translate here. But wait, why doesn't it translate here? It should. Shouldn't, shouldn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, material, create material. Um, do you have transparency? You have transparency. Do you have diffuse? Color of the diffuse channel. You have diffuse. Um, sorry for not kind of explaining what I'm doing. I just want to as quickly solve this as possible. That doesn't work. What about rendered view? That does work in the rendered view, but in the rendered view, this looks worse. Or actually, does it look worse? It maybe it doesn't. Hmm. Do we stick with the rendered view then? Or do we fix the arctic view? How long is this video? Oh, it's, it's a long video. Okay, we stick with the rendered view. You can fix it in the arctic view settings, uh, trust me. But uh, just to save time, we will stick to the... to the rendered view. So, I'm, I'm going to kind of mess mess around with this a little bit more, make this a bit grayish, um, or do we actually, maybe, 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 uh, sorry for taking up so long, I will change the solid color to be light gray, and instead maybe this one is white, and maybe the color is just slightly darker. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad. Um, what else can we do with this? Um, maybe we can get some edges out, uh, prep edges for 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 the zero one uh, output here, and just color those lines. Um, what's the color black? I guess. Uh, color them black and just do a preview for those custom preview uh, Wait that's naked edges. Yeah, I need naked edges precisely hide those doesn't show up. Of course. Why would it? Uh, let me check Surface edges show no nope. uh, curves. Yeah um, blah, blah, blah. Let me guess, they are going to show up in the freaking arctic view now. No, they don't, okay. Uh, for some reason they don't, but they do show up in the shaded view. Okay, what does shaded view have that we don't have? Uh, clipping planes, light curves, mesh wires, tangent seams, edges, uh -huh. rendered, iso curves. If I don't fix it in, in one minute, I will ignore it um, what about 
mesh edges. I mean, it does show these mesh edges, mm, but it doesn't show the... But if I do a preview for the mesh edges, it doesn't... It doesn't show up. That is indeed strange that it does that. Do we just mesh pipe them? How many do we have? 16,000. Maybe we don't mesh pipe them. Maybe that's a, that's a bad idea. Uh, instead, we will look at this closer. Uh, X-ray all wires, shade vertex colors, flat shading, background solid color, user under ground plane, linear workflow settings, uh, custom. Uh, no. Edge thickness, uh, three pixels? No? Okay. Uh, back to edge thickness one. Uh, use lights, draw lights, GPU lighting, show fills. Oh my god, objects. Mm, sheet highlights. Mm, um, nom 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 nom. I could kind of look through what are the differences between the shaded and the rendered view and kind of fix it there, but eh, we, it doesn't matter. We don't have the time. I will, I have a choice either to do this and maybe color this red then and say that that, that was my plan all along. And can we color the mesh edges? Ooh, 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 looks bad. No, uh, mesh edges shouldn't be colored. Uh, but these ones, I can just show them like so, don't have time. Yeah, let, let's do it like that. So we, we preview the material like so that's an ugly brown i don't like it at all can we do yeah we can do this yeah it looks good um so that's our second definition and the way you save the animation is you first set up the the, the kind of the camera so that it's and uh, located nicely, then I would definitely suggest going through the angles every 45 degrees and just checking whether or not the the, the, the shape kind of fits in the in the view. 45 is fine, uh, 90 is fine, 135, 180. Yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, so back to zero. And then I will just right click, uh, right click on the slider, which controls the, the, the rotation, right click, animate. Um, I'll choose a folder in desktop, make new folder, I'll call it uh, enter, hit OK. So that's going to be in that folder. Instead of BMP, you can use JPEG or leave it as BMP format. Doesn't, uh, that's not how you write BMP. BMP format does, doesn't matter. The resolution, I will do 1080 by 1920 because that's good enough for YouTube. Uh, and then frame count. Okay, so how many seconds do you want? The, uh, for it to be smooth, you need at least 30 frames per second. I would say 60, but you know, whatever, uh, let's say 30, 30 frames per second. Um, and then it should go in 10 seconds. And I'm setting it up for my YouTube video and I'll have the text on the side. So I will cancel that. I will just move it to the side a little bit so that I can write some text here in my intro back to animate. Oh crap, I need to rewrite the whole thing. Uh, okay, folder, 1080, 1920, 
300 frames uh, so that's 10 seconds that's perfect include tag definitely no hit ok and it's going to do its thing so you can see it's gonna move the angle uh, like move the angle slider and it's going to keep saving the frames so i'll speed it up and uh, we'll continue on from there Okay, that took way too long, uh, way longer than I expect, expected, but uh, let's take a look at, <clears throat> at the result. <clears throat> so the result that you see here is, you know, we, we have uh, all of these bitmap files saved, and now we need to stitch them together. And there is no real, you know, um, correct program that, well, there's many correct programs that do this. Um, Photoshop can do it, Blender can do it, uh, Unreal Engine can do it, Adobe After Effects, uh, Premiere can do it, Sony Vegas. Um, out, uh, out of the free ones, there is this DaVinci Resolve um, video editing program that can do it. it basically, you need an, a video editing either program or some sort of software package that um, can stitch uh, an image sequence into a, a, a mp4 or some sort of other movie format right so you want to get a movie out from this in my case i'm, I'm using premiere um, so I'll, I'll just be doing that in premiere also mm, there are free uh, online tools that stitch an image sequence into a, a gif gif whatever you call it um, GIF GIF uh, format and so you can just google that and check it out the the thing that you want to find is image sequence um, new project image sequence uh, stitching right or, or image sequence to movie right google that and you'll find something out there I'll hit browse and I'll just create a new tutorial uh, folder tutorial 2020 which one is this like 17th right 17th select folder call this same thing tutorial or uh, sorry tut 2020 17th um, yeah hit ok and here I'm just going to kind of open up my project media file, um, import, select my first frame, click on the image sequence, hit open. I will go through this real, real fast. Drag and drop it in, hit play to see how it looks like. That's how it looks like. 10 seconds of, wait, that's more than 10 seconds. What do you mean? I'll right click on this and choose um, uh, 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 on this animation image sequence and I'll choose um, where is it speed and duration huh that is not correct the duration needs to be 10 I'll hit ok oops that messed up what do you mean? Oh, here you can see the frame rate is set to be 25 uh, frames per second. Can I change the frame rate here? No, I can't. At least I don't think so. I, I, I don't think I can. I'll hit uh, properties. Yeah, I can't change it here. <laughs> Motion, scale, rotation. 
Oh crap, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember how to change it. Okay, sure, let's just change the speed. Um, I, I, will, I will change the duration to 10 seconds. Hit OK. And now it's, even though it says 25 here, it's actually going to kind of speed it up so that it works as if it's a 30 frame per second video. That's good enough for me. So we have this kind of a 360 degree animation. Okay, um, that kind of concludes the tutorial. As per usual, the file, the Grasshopper file is going to be in the description, so you'll be able to um, to download it. Uh, I guess I'll attach the, the Rhino file as well. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!